we are happy. And, oh, we can use the one we learn in calculus in my patient. Okay, the calculus is not useless for that. And then I'll write this as C over to that. Now I have a two term. And this term, it turns out to be written as lambda 1 2 is equal to the minus zeta omega n plus minus Get this from this. Okay, physical meaning is that the zeta is like a flag. It's like a flag. In the traffic. It's like a traffic signal. Equal to one, 
then what do you will get? Your vibratory system does not have oxidation, it's just a decay. Okay, if zeta is smaller than one, it has to be greater than zero, and zeta can be negative. What if we have a negative zeta? What if we have a negative delta? What does it mean by that negative delta? Meaning that <laughs> Interesting, right? And actually, that thing is that when you have a velocity, it, it will produce energy. Produce energy. That is exciting. You challenge it to make a negative damping in some ways. Negative. Negative is very constant, meaning that when I push him, then what will happen? Spring constant. Negative spring constant. He will suck me. Okay, so this is one case, and this is the other case. The other case is when zeta is greater than equal, greater than one. Then what will happen? This is greater than one. Therefore, this one has only real part, real part. Then what will happen? Exponentially decay. Right? And in this case, what happened? This one is smaller than zero, therefore uh, we will have <coughs> lambda one two minus zeta omega n plus minus j omega n squared minus zeta squared. So I have the motion that is exponentially decay but oscillating. The rate of decay depends on zeta. If I have a big zeta, then I have small oscillation. If I have a small zeta, then I have large oscillation. Okay? The what if zeta is zero? If zeta is zero, Zero, then lambda one two is plus minus <coughs> one i n. Therefore, that's the case of free vibration without damper. <laughs> so essentially, this covers everything in life. Okay. Now, the question I ask you to write down. Can you measure natural frequency? Yes, you can. Because if I measure the period of T, what of the period is the frequency? Okay, right? And omega n, 2 pi fn. Therefore, if I measure t, and I can 